video is part of a first course in modelling analysis and control and here the focus is going to be on an introduction to second order models. Modelling principles then. A model is simply a collection of all the statements you can make about a given system. For example, you might look at component equations such as voltage equals current times resistance or force is mass times acceleration. You have common sense observations such as whether points share the same velocity, speed, current or something similar. And you have balance equations such as on flow, volume and energy. This video is going to look at systems for which the resulting model reduces to a second or indeed higher order differential equation of the form given here a d2x dt squared plus b dx dt plus cx equals du. Balance equations then. So a common way of forming models is to create a balance equation. For example, the forces on a mass must sum to mass times acceleration. And you can see an example equation we've given here. Or the sum of voltage across components in a loop must sum to the applied voltage. So you have a balance equation there. Or flow balance. For example, the flow could be fluid or energy. And you need the sum of flow in or out matches any accumulation. Now we're going to use such balance equations to form models for a number of systems. Core examples. So a reminder that this video is a very quick overview with limited examples and gone very fast. You should use the slower and more complete resources to learn from and see the fine details. So the sorts of examples we might look at. Suspension units which appear on cars and bikes. DC servos. And here you can see an example from a toy or an electric drill. Airplane roll is in the additional resources. RLC electric circuits, which are a very common second order model. So we start with a mass spring damper, which basically matches a simple suspension system. So what are we going to do? We're going to do a balance equation. And you can see the balance equation comes from this bit here, where the applied force is essentially distributed across the three components, the damper, the spring, and the mass. So the component equations, we have the component equation for the damper, for the spring, and for the mass, and then we have the balance equations. And we simply put those four equations together, and we end up with a second order differential equation model, F equals m d 2 x dt squared plus b dx dt plus kx. Now, here's a challenge question for you. How would you derive a model for the following? And you can see all I've done is added a pulley on the end of the suspension system. So how would you deal with this particular problem? Well, the answer is more straightforward than you might think. You simply add component equations and one more balance equation. And here they are. So we'll let you look at that in slower time. A resistor inductor capacitor, so this is a very common circuit, an RLC circuit, and all we're going to do is use Kirchhoff's voltage law. So voltage balance gives that the applied voltage V has to balance the voltages V1, V2 and V3 across the three components. So now we write the component equations. We've got the component equation for the resistor, the one for the capacitor and the one for the inductor. And here you'll notice I've written all the component equations in terms of charge because that makes life easier. So now we take all those together and we end up with our model V equals L D2 Q DT squared plus R DQ DT plus Q over C. Analogies then. Now a mass stores energy linked to velocity and an inductor stores energy linked to charge. So you can see the mass here and the inductor here are analogous components. A resistor dissipates energy as heat when current flows, and a damper dissipates energy as heat when there's a velocity. So you can see the resistor and the damper are analogous components. And a capacitor stores charge as energy, and a spring stores displacement as energy. So you can see that the spring and the capacitor are analogous. And finally, Voltage is analogous to force here. You can see the force has been distributed between the three components in this example, and the voltage has been distributed between the three components in this example. So what we've got is analogous components 
models and behaviors. And you can see the mass and the inductor appear in the same position in the equation. The damper and the resistor appear in the same position. The spring and the capacitor appear in the same position. So if you understand the mass spring damper, you understand the RLC circuit and vice versa. Simple DC motor equations. So if you take a DC motor, you're going to end up with a lot of equations. And here they are, five equations. And the key thing is this is the model. Now, I'm not going to derive it because you can look at that in the slower resources. And that's not the purpose of this video. But the key thing is the model actually comprises all those equations taken together. So the model comprises five simultaneous equations. But a relief for some of you, this is beyond the remit of most first courses. Some further examples. Typically, a user may need to do multiple balance equations. A model is a group of interdependent equations taken together. So that's a key point. You don't have to end up with a single equation. You can have a number of interdependent equations, and that is your model. Here's an example from a pancreas. So insulin and glucose levels involve two first or audio ODEs. And it might be sufficient to write the model just as it is these two ODEs taken together. If you've got multiple tanks, then you can see here I've got an equation for tank one, an equation for tank two. But critically, you'll see there's some interdependence. The H1 here appearing in the second equation is the H1 appearing in the first one. Further examples. This is an introductory video to introduce principles rather than cover all the examples you need to know. To some extent, good engineers need to be confident to derive the models and determine the appropriate balance equations without prior knowledge of a given system. So what I would say to you is you must focus on principles rather than memorizing particular examples. Expect to tackle an unseen example in an examination. So conclusions. This video has introduced some simple engineering systems that can be represented by second order models. You should understand the core steps in deriving these models so you can apply to other scenarios and systems. And understanding analogies is a core learning outcome because if you understand the analogies between the systems, this will help you understand their behaviours and also extend that understanding to other systems. And finally, a reminder, obviously, keep up with your quizzes and tutorial sheets and bring any questions you have to contact sessions.